guest is the oldest working performer in show business, having turned 90 years young last week. In a career that spans 60 years, he's presented Radio 4's Just a Minute since 1967, entertained audiences of over 20 million with his hit quiz show, Sail of the Century, and still performs at the Edinburgh Festival every year. Please welcome Nicholas Barton! <laughs> Before we go any further, yeah. Nicholas, state education or private education? You? Well, I think there's arguments for both. Yeah. I mean, some of the private schools, of course, are wonderful, but they are selective and they're expensive. But some of the state schools now are wonderful. What a wonderful diplomat you are. <laughs> well, Michael, did you send your children to state school or private school? Well, uh, when they went to a private school, it was so private, even I didn't know where it was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some of the secondary schools today, some of the, uh, the uh, comprehensive schools, that they are, some of them are so much better than others that people are moving their homes to live in that area so their children could go to yeah. that school. Yeah. Yeah. I think mean, you do your best for your child, don't you, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. That. But let's talk about the legend that is Nicholas Parsons. Everyone's going to say, so uh, what keeps you going to 90, Nick? Why do you still want to do it? Oh, you've got to keep going. I mean, if, if they didn't, I'd, they'd think I was dead. <laughs> your brain all the time. I mean, you treat it like a muscle and keep it going. And I believe if I have survived and can still work and hack it, as they say in our show business, I mean, we're in a profession. People say to me, turn this up, are you going to retire? I said, I'm in a business that retires you. If they no longer think I can do it or the public don't want me, I'm out on the scrap heap. But you see, I read an interview with your daughter over the weekend, which was so complimentary. She said, she said the three most important things in Dad's life this is absolutely true. And it was a beautiful piece. The three most important things in Dad's life, she said, are work, his family and his garden. Yes, that's right. And I thought, there's a man. <laughs> <laughs> now, you and I have met a lot over the years, and gardening's still important to you? Oh, gosh, yes. It's a, it's a therapy. I mean, you must know it yourself. It's the greatest therapy in the world to get out there. I can be working very hard, have all kinds of stresses from the weird and wonderful profession in which we work. I get into the garden, I'm at the soil and my blooms, and sl my blooms, I know why I say that. <laughs> but slowly, the stresses of your work sort of disappear. Yeah. Yeah. And it's wonderful. It's a real therapy. I've got a wonderful story to tell you, if you want to hear about Because I've had one or two lovely accolades in my life, and, uh, but I've had one which people don't know about. Because as a keen gardener, I've had two or three different gardens, and I've had very privileged, I've had them on television and radio, and I love roses. It's good to have a garden on the radio, they can't see. <laughs> <laughs> you talk about gardener's <laughs> question, Tom, oh, that's on the right. greatest show <laughs> on the radio four. Yeah. Anyway, and so it was. But I, I love roses. And it's always been a secret ambition of mine to have a rose named after me. But it hasn't happened. But about two or three years ago, they named a fuchsia after me. Oh. Yes. I don't know if it's still there, but if you go down to your local garden centre and look for the fuchsias and find one which has a label on it which says, Fuchsia Nicholas Parsons. But then, turn the label over, and on the other side it says, Nicholas Parsons will do well in any bed. <laughs> <laughs> Feed well, and you should have amazing results. Oh. And, and the final thing was yeah. not very good up against the wall. <laughs> <laughs> you see, with things like just a minute, yeah. you've, you've gone to you've Clement Freud, Derek Nimmo, lovely names, oh, all gone. gone. They've gone. You're the lo last surviving. But do you still think that the likes of Paul Merton and oh, John Brand yes. they keep you on your toes? Oh, in a absolutely, way, yes. I mean, you have to. I mean, it, it is a, the most creative thing I do. And I, I said once in, in an interview that uh, I have to concentrate so hard because I have to make instant decisions, whether it was repetition, deviation, yeah. hesitation, instant, keep it going, it's like orchestrating the show, bringing them all in, keep creating the rapport, creating fun. And so I concentrate so hard throughout that show, I'm using my brain so much that I think I'm incredibly lucky. I have a job which I love doing and it helps to keep me young. You must get sort you of... Didn't get any reaction at all. <laughs> <laughs> because I was about to say, you must meet 75-year-olds who are really on their knees, and you look at them, you know, you can give them 15 <laughs> years. <laughs> I see you've got a whole lot of golden oldies here. <laughs> <laughs> the 
not this golden <laughs> and this old. So, well, yeah. I, I must say, last year, I must say, Alan, last week has been one of the most memorable weeks of my life, and I haven't quite recovered from it yet. It's because on, on Tuesday, Annie, my lovely wife, and I organised a fabulous party, over 200 people at the Hyatt Churchill Hotel, and we had lots of my, all my family and friends, and also a lot of show business friends. On Wednesday, we tried to recover. On Thursday, my family gave me a huge party and another cake. On Friday, the Lady Tablet is part of the charity I work for. They gave me another party with another cake. On Saturday, we got home to the country where we live, pile of mess like that, and the, the village gave me another cake. And yesterday... <laughs> 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 Annie, my wife, organised a lovely little party for the small grandchildren with, you know... Better they take that cake away, is that enough? I've got another cake today. Another cake today, you may well. Well. We'll give you another one when you're 91, cos I think you get one every year now. Oh, right. Delighted right. to have you with us. My thanks to Nicholas Parsons. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I stay here? Oh, yeah.